Right, so this video is looking at constructive and gross negligence manslaughter. Again, this is a popular area for Section Bs and Dilemma Boards. Uh, dilemmas will probably just focus on one aspect. Uh, so whether they can be guilty of CM or unlawful act manslaughter as it's known or gross negligence. Section Bs, obviously you'll probably be talking about both. You'd have to look for maybe doctors for gross negligence or somebody that owes some form of duty. Uh, whereas constructive, you'll probably see somebody doing something that's physically then uh, going to cause death. Going to treat them both together just because when it was a less, an essay last, which was quite a long time ago, um, it was a mixed essay, which was why that was an option in your first mock, um, looking at those two areas combined. Obviously, as always, you could get an essay solely on constructive, so you'd need 12 cases, or again, solely on gross neg. So I have just bobbed it at that side again as normal. Um, so I will take them together now and look at it. If it was an essay, how would you word it? Because really, what you do in an essay and what you do in a section B, your knowledge is pretty much going to be the same, unless obviously there's different cases you'd use relevant to the section B. So with CM, you're looking at four paragraphs then to structure your answer, really. So you're going to start by saying that manslaughter is different to murder. You've not generally got the required MR. And the first thing we need to establish is an unlawful act. So I've just been very, very basic, lamb and larkin. So one case that did show an unlawful act and one case that didn't. So you've got larkin with the unlawful act of the assault the minute before the razor got uh, slit her throat. Then lamb, you've got the uh, no unlawful act there because there was no fear. So just getting straight into it, short snappy paragraph showing where there was or was not. Danger is probably your biggest focus then. So whether it's classed as dangerous, your main case is obviously going to be church. Remember, it set that two-part test with the SRP. So the sober, reasonable person needs to see uh, it is dangerous and the sober, reasonable person needs to see a risk of some harm. So again, when it comes to Section Bs, make sure you're applying that. Um, but obviously, at this point in an essay, you're just telling me what that test is and that church's actions did satisfy that. And I've then given you Watson and Dawson because although there were no convictions in those cases, they are still important cases because they told us things um, about the sober, reasonable person. Once you finish that, then your next paragraph is whether it's caused death. As you can notice there, I've just sticked, uh, sticked. I've just stuck to Mitchell and Goodfellow. Um, you could use drug cases. There's nothing wrong with using drug cases. You could add Kennedy in there. So if it's an essay on its own. Um, then clearly these cases would not be enough. So then drugs cases, you could be adding in something like Rogers and then Kennedy. Uh, obviously, Kennedy's your leading precedent, so you would need that. But just because I'm just sticking as a, a basic essay here or a problem with no drugs, I'm just sticking straight with your easier cases. So you've got transferred malice with Mitchell and then you've got Goodfellow. As you're nice and easy, as it caused death, normal rules of causation apply. It clearly has because he set the house on fire. And then lastly, your mens rea. So they need to have the mens rea just for the unlawful act. So it's a little bit harsh. You're getting up to life with quite a low level of MR there as a result. So again, that's good for your AO2. Um, and I've just stuck to Newbury and Jones just because it shows the unfairness. They're both kids. Clearly, they intended to throw the slab. That's automatically made them guilty. Um, and it just shows you there as a result. Or if you wanted, you could link Goodfellow in again because he had the MR for the fire, but you just need to remember your repetition won't class as two cases. So really that's what you're looking for for CM, just those four paragraphs there uh, with those relevant cases. Okay, and as you notice, I have used quite a lot there. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cases there. Again, you can sort of cut slightly if you wanted to. You could just do one for unlawful act. You could just do good fellow for causing death if you wanted to. Um, it just really depends on your time. And you always tend to do less for gross negligence. So it might be that you just want that top heavy um, set there. Right, moving on to gross negligence then. So you've got gross negligence manslaughter. It can occur via a positive or a negative act. You can have gross neg by omission. Um, three sort of main things really. Duty breach and whether that action were gross negligence. So the GM bit is really your, uh, your MR bit there. So duty of care then, so we need to establish a duty. Your leading case to have set that was Donoghue and Stevenson. Although it's a civil case, it applies to criminal law, so that's a little bit weird to be fair, but again, it's good AO2. 
and I've stuck I've put Donahue in there obviously but really in major cases I would choose would be Stone and Litchfield so Stone and Dobinson make it nice and easy it gets you a case count even though technically it's an emissions case because it was gross negligence fans slaughter via emission and then I've got Litchfield there as well he obviously owed the duty to the crew Breach of duty, remember there's no case law, you're just judging against the reasonable competence, whoever really. So if it's me, reasonable competent teacher, you, reasonable competent student. So um, that should be quite a short, short, snappy really, two lines. Uh, your next part then is, is more important for your section Bs really. So we've got gross negligence, we need to establish gross negligence really in order to get that conviction. You've got your three tests from Bateman, Andrews, Adamarco. Um, you do need to give the case facts and obviously the outcome if you are going to get those marks. So just telling me the testing Bateman and the testing Andrews is not going to get you any marks whatsoever. You might as well just not talk about it. So you need to make sure you're confident Bateman wasn't grossly negligent, normal practice. Andrews was grossly negligent, Adamarco was. And just make sure that you're telling me the facts as well as including those relevant tests. Again, that will help you when you're planning your section Bs because then you know you've got to use those three. So that's probably going to be the biggest paragraph. And then finishing off, risk of death. Clearly there needs to be a risk of death in the, that situation. Whether you see that risk or not is irrelevant, but it must be there. Uh, it must be apparent. So in Misra, clearly they're not treating. He's had a major operation. Infection starts. If you've got an infection and you don't treat it, there's always going to be a risk of death. Even today, I know we've got more medicine now, but the bugs are getting more susceptible to the medicine so that's why it's getting harder for us to fight infection um so any sort of big situation like that is always going to provide that risk of death okay uh, so you've got your both areas there as i've said you've got your set paragraphs so you're looking you know probably four paragraphs per area um, and I'd just leave a sentence after Newbury and Jones and then get straight into gross negligence after. You just can restart it, right? This is a different type of uh, manslaughter. Notice um, that I haven't put anything to do with subjective reckless. Um, you can add that to the end down here. Just as a sentence, there's arguably a third type of manslaughter, subjective reckless. And you could, if you wanted to uh, link it in with LIDAR, um, if you've uh, not got your cases there as a result the most recent mark scheme um, does credit four marks without that so worst case scenario i wouldn't worry however if it is in a section b and it's relevant to a section b you would be expected to use it so if there is cm and you're a bit ropey is where the cm would be a possible charge they would expect potentially for you to then link in Lidar and go through SRM. So just be careful there. I'm happy for you to sort of not think about it massively. But if you do see something in a section B that's basically the facts of Lidar, then you would be expected to use that as well. Okay, uh, so that's constructive and gross negligence, also known as involuntary manslaughter.